if you're concerned about online privacy as far as your email goes, if you're worried about things like tracking and having your data mined by big tech, if you're maybe looking to move away from Gmail, then the good news is there are quite a few private secure email services available. One very reputable alternative is ProtonMail. In fact, ProtonMail is my top choice for secure encrypted business email. It is what I'm using myself these days for my online business. That said, my friend, if you're like most Gmail users, then the thought of untangling yourself from Google and from Gmail might sound very complex and very daunting and very difficult, either for your personal email or for your business. Yet, at the same time, issues like privacy and security and maybe wanting to move away from big tech could maybe have you feeling like you're between a rock and a hard place. Well, I'm happy to tell you that ProtonMail, in fact, makes it very easy, incredibly straightforward to, let's say, de-Google yourself, and it won't take a whole lot of effort either. You know what, though? I'm totally getting ahead of myself here. We'll talk a little bit more about migrating to ProtonMail in just a little bit. First up, though, what is ProtonMail? What makes it such a great choice for secure email? And why may it just be a perfect fit for you? Well, ProtonMail is based in Switzerland, which has some of the strictest privacy laws on the planet. Further, as the world's largest secure email provider with over 1 million users, Proton's mission is all about privacy and security online. And I'll tell you, from a practical day-to-day -day standpoint, ProtonMail is fast, it is secure, it is intuitive, and it's easy to use. Your Proton account is accessible via a web client, meaning through your web browser, you can integrate it into your desktop email if you use a desktop email client like, I don't know, Outlook or Thunderbird or whatever. And you can also use Proton, of course, on your mobile device. Signing up for a Proton Mail account can be done completely anonymously too, which is amazing. This means that no personal information needs to be provided, you know, like your name, your address, your mobile phone number, all that stuff. Okay, so here's the plan. What we'll do here first is we'll take a look at ProtonMail's core feature, core function, secure private email, of course. Then what we'll do is we'll take a look at their included contacts manager and encrypted calendar. And then finally, towards the end, we'll go over Proton's pricing options, where I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. So I hope that sounds like a plan. Let's jump right into it. Let's start with their core service email. Of course, the core of ProtonMail's service is encrypted email. It's in the name of the company, but let's be clear about exactly what this means. So here's how it works. First, all your email that is stored with ProtonMail will be totally secure. Not even the ProtonMail service itself can access your emails. Second, emails sent between Proton users or recipients who use other encrypted email services like MailFence or Tutanota will be totally secure and encrypted as well. What this means is that no one other than the sender and the receiver can read the contents of your emails third-party apps, like I said a moment ago, the Proton service itself, and really anyone else cannot gain access to the contents of your emails. However, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated, however, I'm sure this is a concern for you, if you were to send regular email to a non-Proton mail user or a user who is not using any kind of encrypted email service, let's say Yahoo or Gmail or whatever, then of course your message won't be secure meaning that the receiver's email service, third-party apps, and other people could access the contents of your emails. However, what you can do is you can optionally password protect the emails that you send. When you send a password protected email to a non-Proton mail user or to a user who's using just regular old email, then what they're gonna get on their end is, well, they receive an email that says, you have received a secure message. Then when they click to view the secure message, they have to input the password that you have set, of course, on the email. And once they're in 
and this is pretty cool, they're going to be able to view and reply to your message in a ProtonMail-like interface. I know all this can seem kind of complex and confusing, but quite honestly, my friend, this is one of the number one objections that people have when they are considering using an encrypted email service like ProtonMail. They're sitting there going, well, what's the point of encrypted email if the emails that I send to other people who are using regular old email, those messages aren't going to be encrypted? Well, as a matter of fact, you can optionally encrypt them. So keep all of this in mind as you're using ProtonMail. Maybe for yourself, you aren't concerned about protecting messages that you send, and instead you simply want to protect your stored email. Maybe that's the situation you're in. Or if you are sending sensitive information to non-Proton Mail users, well, just be sure to password protect your messages so that everything remains secure for you. Further still, Proton Mail is certainly suitable for businesses and work groups, both large and small. So maybe you're in a situation where you want end to end encryption with all internal communications within your organization. That, of course, is completely possible with Proton Mail. Now, as far as the Proton Mail service itself goes, admittedly, at first I was a little turned off by the user interface. I think just because I was so used to Gmail's clean, modern interface. By contrast, ProtonMail's interface, to me anyway, felt blocky and even maybe a little bit dated. But quite honestly, after using ProtonMail for just a short while, I quickly got used to it. And honestly, these days, it doesn't bother me at all. In fact, now, these days, I'm totally used to it. It doesn't bother me at all. In fact, it's grown on me. I like it. <laughs> Plus, I'm totally willing to give up a few conveniences, minor conveniences, if it means moving away from big tech's prying eyes. Beyond that, ProtonMail has all the standard stuff that you would expect in an email client. I'm talking about things like folders and labels and spam protection and autoresponders and email archive and all the rest of it. And if you're thinking of using ProtonMail for your business, know that you can set up custom domain branded email accounts too. So here I'm talking about maybe something like your first name at your domain or customer support at your domain, info at your domain. You get the idea. You can totally set that up in ProtonMail. One other feature that I want to note here is the ability to optionally, and this is super cool, optionally send self-destructing emails. That is, you can set a timer to auto delete emails that you send, which I think is super cool. And you know what, as a matter of fact, just yesterday I received an email from ProtonMail announcing a new feature that allows you to unsend an email that you just sent, which is super cool too. I'm sure you and I have both been in a situation where that would have been helpful. I should mention too, that there are quite a few customizations and settings available to you inside your Proton account. So for instance, you can apply different interface themes, you can set up custom settings and behaviors and other mail settings. And don't forget, if you want, you can integrate ProtonMail into your desktop email client too, again, like Apple Mail or Outlook or whatever you're using if you want, which is all done by something called ProtonMail Bridge. However, for myself, I just stick with the web-based client. I use ProtonMail through my browser, the majority of the time anyway, but as mentioned, you can use Proton's mobile app too, which combines your email and Proton's contact manager all on your smartphone or tablet. All right, the second component to Proton Mail service is their built-in contacts manager, and truthfully, my friend, there isn't a whole lot to say here. I mean, it's a fast, easy to use, straightforward, and very functional contacts manager, which is really all we need, right? And of course, your contacts manager will be accessible via ProtonMail's web client and your mobile device, all totally encrypted. As far as adding contacts goes, anytime you send an email, the recipient will automatically be added to your list of contacts. Of course, you can also manually add contacts to if you like. Further, you can import contacts via vCard or CVS, which is really great. This makes moving your contacts over from Gmail fast and painless. It's super simple. I did it myself and it works perfectly. Another great feature inside ProtonMail's contact manager is the ability to create contact groups, maybe for different work groups based on projects or something like this. So this may be of interest for you. 
Beyond that, there really isn't a whole lot for me to add here. It's a secure encrypted contact manager that simply works. What's much more interesting, at least to me, is Proton's calendar, which is what we're gonna take a look at next. Okay, next up, Proton Mail comes packed with a fully encrypted calendar. However, at this time, their calendar is still in beta. And as a matter of fact, it's been in beta for as long as I can remember. As far as functionality, I've been using Proton Mail's calendar for quite a while and it works really, really well. In fact, it's my go-to calendar these days. It's intuitive, it's functional, especially if you're coming over from Google Calendar. More on that in just a sec. With your Proton calendar, you can create multiple calendars if you need. Adding and editing events is simple and intuitive, and the calendar provides a variety of views like day, week, and month. Further, if you're migrating over from Gmail, importing your events from Google Calendar is an absolute breeze, totally painless. Simply export your calendar from Google in the .ics file format, and import directly into your Proton calendar. I did this myself and it ran absolutely perfectly without a single hitch. All in all, my friend, I only have two minor, incredibly minor <laughs> gripes here. First of all, as already mentioned, the calendar can only be used in Proton Mail's beta version. The second incredibly minor gripe is that Proton Mail's calendar is only available as a separate mobile app on Android and iOS. However, again, this is so incredibly minor that it is hardly worth mentioning. The only reason why I bring this up is because I absolutely love how Tutanota, another encrypted email service, I love how they pack their email, their contacts manager, and the encrypted calendar all into one single fast running app. I would love to see something similar from Proton Mail in their mobile app, and who knows, maybe that's something that they're cooking over on their side. So there you go, there's a run through of Proton Mail's email contacts manager and encrypted calendars. Next up, let's get down to brass tacks and talk about pricing. All right, now as far as pricing goes for Proton Mail, you can certainly take Proton Mail for a test drive if you like by signing up for a free account to see if it's gonna be a good fit for you either personally or maybe for your online business before you're ready to sign up for a paid plan. Free accounts come with 500 megs of storage and a contacts manager and calendar. However, there are some limitations here like limited customer support, no email filters, no autoresponders, no custom domains, and you're limited to 500 messages a day. Proton's paid plans start at just five bucks a month, which is insanely crazy low. And their lowest paid tier includes five gigs of storage, your contacts manager, your calendar, custom domain names, email filters, autoresponders, and a few other goodies. And if need be, you can always add extra storage, email addresses, and domains to your plan if you need to customize things a little bit. On a personal note, I've been using Proton for about a year or so. Right now I'm on their professional plan, which is running me a paltry eight bucks a month. And I've got to tell you, it is absolutely fantastic. Proton Mail is fast, it's secure. I've had zero problems using it with my online business, plus the peace of mind knowing that all my email is safe and secure is a MasterCard commercial. It's priceless. Was that Visa or MasterCard? I can't remember. Anyway, overall, I'm totally impressed with Proton Mail. I've got to tell you, and I'm struggling here to think of any negatives or any downsides to fill you in on, because I really want this to be sort of like fair and balanced here. It's incredibly streamlined, the Proton service. It's simple to use. It runs great. Further, Proton gets tons and tons of rave reviews and is rapidly growing in popularity as a well-respected email service. I suppose one downside that does come to mind is migrating over from your current email service, I don't know, maybe like Gmail or something, over to Proton Mail. This can feel like a pretty massive daunting task. It can feel stomach churning. As a matter of fact, I'll admit, I put off moving over to Proton for about a month or so. I wanted to move over, but just the thought of actually going through with it, just dreading the entire process, I delayed. 
But you want to know something? When I finally mustered up enough guts to actually sit down and do it, the entire process was incredibly straightforward, easy, and painless. I couldn't believe it. I wish I hadn't have put off migrating over to Proton for so long. Seriously, it was no big deal. As a matter of fact, I've put together another video on exactly this, moving over from Gmail over to Proton and some things to consider and look out for if you want to do the same thing. If you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link for you down below in the show notes. In the meantime, one other item that I've got to squeeze in here is this. ProtonMail also offers a free VPN with its plans. If you aren't sure what a VPN is, essentially this is software or a service that protects your online privacy while you're surfing the web. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about VPNs in a totally plain English, non-technical way, then I've got a video on exactly that too, which I will once again link up to in the show notes down below for you. So should you use ProtonMail yourself? Well, if it's secure, private, encrypted email that you're after, that gets you away from the prying eyes and the data mining and all the stuff that big tech is up to, then ProtonMail is a top choice. And you know, since you can sign up for free, why not give ProtonMail a test drive for yourself, get hands-on with it, see if you like it, and see if it's gonna be a good fit for you. The only encrypted email service that's even close to ProtonMail, at least in my experience, is Tutanota. I use both Tutanota and ProtonMail, and both are very good. I use Proton for my business email, and I use Tutanota for personal use. Both offer secure encrypted services and are very, very similar to one another, although ProtonMail just feels a lot more developed and geared towards professional business-grade email. If you're interested, I've also done a full review on Tutanota, which once again, I'll link to in the show notes down below for you. So why not give both Tutanota and ProtonMail a try and go with the one that feels best for you. And in the meantime, if you're ready to take the next big steps forward with your online business, I mean, your business email is just one of your three critical web components, right? For your online business. There's also domain names and hosting. Then let's make sure to get yourself set up right on your side. And that's exactly what you and I do over at 10tononline.com forward slash web. What you'll find over there is a free online business workshop, which really lays out all the, all the components, all the pieces that you're going to need to put together for your own online business. Once again, in plain English, non-techy lingo. I know you're going to enjoy it. So grab yourself a beverage and a notepad, and I'll catch you over there in just a second. Thank you.